Hi, this is Jo Toy and welcome to my video series on tools and techniques. Today I'm going to be talking about a product called Clear Tar Gel and I'm sure many of you have it sitting in your art cupboards and you really don't know what to do with it. It's a really interesting product which was developed by Golden when they did the Jackson Pollock movie and they needed something to make the paint function like it did when he did his paintings. It's really a, a weird product in that it's kind of like honey. It's very resinous and stringy and the neat thing is is that once it's uh, poured it can pour in one continuous string. Now they say, and I've not tried it, but you can go to a three-story building, pour this jar, and it will go in one continuous stream to the bottom of that three-story building. Now, if you wanna try it, prove it right or wrong, just let me know if that worked. Um, Clear Tar Gel is by Golden, and then Liquitex has made a product called uh, string gel and they're very similar. I haven't found a lot of difference between them. Some of my students have but I haven't at all. Now if you want to use clear tar gel um, as it is, you can dribble it off a palette knife like I just did and you dribble it onto your surface. And I use it that way and love it that way. But another thing that you can do is you can transfer it into a uh, squeeze bottle with, a, uh, with different size openings. The problem with this is getting it into this squeeze bottle. You can't use um, a funnel because it's just too resinous and too sticky. So you basically have to transfer it from here into this bottle by pouring it. And um, I am going to give you a little tip. If you can get a bottle with the biggest opening, mouth opening that you can, things are gonna be a lot easier for you to do this. This is actually pretty small for what to do this with. Um, the problem is most of the bottles that have larger openings are not airtight, but you can find them. And the larger that opening, the easier it'll be to pour this. Now, because this comes out of this jar in a fat stream, the only way you can pour this into this bottle is to pour it from a distance, from a height. And the second thing is you have to keep your bottle at an angle. So I'm not gonna show you this right now. I have a picture of it on my website, but usually you can start pouring and you just move this and once you get going, it trickles into a little stream and can go in there. And so I wanted to show you that first of all. And then once you get it in this size bottle, then you can put it in littler and littler bottles with littler and littler openings. And the opening, the tip size, will determine how wide of a tar gel line you will get when you apply it. So you'll see that. I'm gonna show you all of the different lines in just a minute when I demo uh, putting the tar gel onto my surfaces. Now, you can apply tar gel to just about any surface. I would avoid your cat, dog, or anything that you don't want to be permanently covered with tar gel. Um, but all that said, any surface that you normally would paint on is fair game. Um, I usually demo it on Yupo, and I usually coat my Yupo with gesso, um, white gesso or black gesso, and that works just really wonderful. Whatever you put your tar gel over, whatever color you put it on, the tar gel, because it's clear, will look that color. So if I put tar gel on white, the tar gel is going to look white. If I put tar gel on black, the tar gel is going to look black once it dries. You'll see in a minute, it looks pretty kind of bluish and cloudy when I put it on the black, and I'm gonna demo on the black because you'll see it easier than you will on the white. But once it's dry, it does look um, like a black shiny line. The other thing that you can do is you can put it over any color. Uh, that you might uh, paint your paper. And in this paper, yeah, in this example, I have painted my paper of uh, various colors and then applied the tar gel and therefore the line, the color of the tar gel looks like the color underneath it. You can use this on canvas. I'm sure you can use it on masonite board. It is a very, very sticky substance and uh, dries hard and also dries raised. So you want to be very careful not to get it on your painting table because it will um, remain raised and be almost impossible to get off. So I'm going to show you um, several ways that you can apply it. I'm going to use the black so that you can see it easier, but the most important thing that I need to tell you 
is to make sure that you have something underneath it that you can just throw away um, because you're going to get tar gel all over that and I like to come out uh, of my paper outside of my paper not just stay within its boundaries and you won't do that if you don't have something underneath it that will grab that extra tar gel so the first thing that I want to show you is using the tar gel with the the palette knife and this uh, you merely dip it in your tar gel and you let it string onto your paper now if your tar gel is new it's going to string pretty easily if it's old it'll kind of glump off your uh, palette knife and you can thin this tar gel um, golden recommends 10% water to uh, the volume of your tar gel. If your tar gel is older, that means it's already lost some of its uh, liquid, so you might be able to add a little more, but you want to thin it until it streams off in a really nice fluid stream. The other thing I forgot to mention is that you can color your tar gel, and you can put up to 10% color into your tar gel, and you can make it any color that you want. Black, I put black gesso in it, you can make it, put acrylic in it, and because it's clear once it dries your lines will be that color so I just want to show you what it looks like to uh, drip your tar gel off of a palette knife and I always start it over my um, jar and then I start it off the surface so that I kind of get an idea and you can see that's a pretty fine line and when you dribble it from your palette knife that's about what you get and you can get a little bit thicker if it's thinner but that's pretty much what you get now Clean off your palette knife because, again, tar gel likes uh, to stay on what you get it on. The second thing you can do is, like I said, put it in a bottle. And I'll show you. This has uh, not a big opening, but a fairly uh, nice size opening. And you need a bottle that clicks on and you know that it's airtight. And you simply just squeeze it and you can apply your tar gel however you want. The slower you go, the more... Um, drippy it'll be and you just get your lines on there and that's that size and then you can go down to this size bottle basically has just about the same opening as that and this size bottle has a very little opening so if you're wanting to get more exact lines uh, or very fine lines again you can do it with this and you can just be more exact with the bottle and the smaller the opening the slower it comes out so the more exact that you can be and you just apply this in whatever pattern that you like now if you're doing one of my workshops the two things I want to remind you of is to come off the edges of the paper like I'm doing here and to do some straights and some circulars you want to give yourself as uh, much options as many options as you can to find shapes which we're going to be doing with this tar gel now the next important thing is is that you remove it from here to a clean surface because it will adhere itself to this surface and don't just put it down on uh, your nice table or that because there will be some tar gel on the edge and it will adhere to that so be sure to set this onto some other newspaper or some other surface that you don't care about in case it does stick and then lastly because tar gel and any of the acrylic products are expensive I take my palette knife and I just scrape it up and put it back in my bottle and so you don't have to worry about having gone off the edges uh, because you can just scrape all that extra up. I usually just use newspaper for this but for the video I didn't want uh, the evening news staring in your face as I demoed this. So that is basically how you apply tar gel and then you need to let it dry. Um, it takes at least three hours for tar gel to dry and um, in in uh, excuse me I gotta reach to get this uh, in more humid climates it will take even longer than that now this is dry and this is on black and you can see that now those lines are black and they're kind of shiny and I will be showing you what we do with this in other videos but I wanted to be sure um, that you saw this I have a workshop coming up and I wanted uh, people to see exactly how I put on the tar gel. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions just let me know. Bye!